Sean and Zee there. Hello and welcome, I'm Rupert Cooper and this is The Rupert Cooper Show. Um, Sean, I haven't had a drink all day so I'm going to have a drink. <laughs> I have actually had a drink, it's Thursday. Coming up today, we discuss Should Schools Ban Slam, we discuss about Michael Rosen's Poetry Prize, we, we will show you again how to make a paper aeroplane and, oh, oh, no, there's, there's one more before we do the and. We discuss do drone displays beat fireworks and we do the weather. All coming up on the Rupert Goob show. We might even sneak two weathers in there. You know, I'm having big problems with my laptop. Big problems. It's just not working. I've got the old paper though, so. Um, but before we do that, Here's this. Recording from RTV Television Studios in Batley. This is The Rupert Cooper Show. With me, Rupert Cooper. Right then. So shall we get started by discussing if schools, if schools should ban slam? But before that, can I just say, most of these discussions again today do come from the weak junior. Technical difficulties. So, some do today come from the weak junior, uh, as we have discussed on the last show. Um, so, we're going to take a look at should schools ban slang now. Uh, so, let's take to our normal background. So... Uh, here is our quote from the week junior uh, saying should schools ban slam? Um, one school has banned certain words or phrases. Arc All Saints Academy in London produced a list of slang words and phrases that its students cannot use in the schoolwork or classroom. Slang is words or phrases that are informal and used by people who know each other well come from the same area or have the same interests. Many linguists, experts who study language, say that slang is an important part of the English language. In recent years, slang terms such as whatevs, something and chillax have been added to Oxford English Dictionary. Why, we don't know. Well, they are still kind of words, really. Um, so... Here are some comments saying yes, no, and yes. No, no, yes, and no, sorry. No, yes, uh, yes no, and yes. Um, so, no, this sentence would not be acceptable at Arcol Saints Academy in London. Basically, it starts with words students aren't allowed to use at the beginning of sentences. You see, a school has brought in a list of words or phrases, including slang words, um, which students aren't allowed to use. In the classroom, really. Um, some words or phrases that that must that basically, and you see, band slang includes phrases. He cut his eyes at me. That's a neck. The school says these phrases were appearing in students' work, and that's important. They express themselves clearly and accurately. However, some language experts say it's unfair. So, what do you think? Should school, uh, should slang be banned in schools? So, if you if you uh, want to drop a comment to me or anything, you can email me at rupco at yahoo.com. That is r-u-p-c-o-o at yahoo.com. I'm not spelling yahoo.com that close. Oh, um, so... We have had some comments in already because we, I think, I can't remember why, but we have already had some comments in. <clears throat> my studio manager would kill me if he saw that on my desk. Oh. Right, anyway, so here are some of the comments that have been sent in by some people. Yes, Sam doesn't belong in schools. There are situations where it is appropriate to use certain words isn't appropriate to use certain words or phrases. Slang doesn't belong in school. When students are in the class 
classroom, they should be learning how to use language properly so they can get better experience, better express themselves around how to, well, learn English, formal English. And in some schools, they say only the Queen's English is allowed. So, uh, the Queen does not speak slang, so, uh, let me think about that. Right, so this Queen doesn't think uh, speak slang, so people are not allowed to speak slang in some schools, if it's a, like a Catholic school. No, no, it's a part of the English language. Language is constantly involved in words take on different meanings and new phrases are developed to help people better express themselves. Words constantly come in and out of fashion. Slang is a valuable part of this process and is something schools should not ignore. ignore. Um, um, well, I know, but really what I was trying to say is some words are acceptable, but some aren't. Anyways, um, we're going to take you to three reasons why um, slang should be banned in schools and three reasons why slang shouldn't be banned in schools. One, it is important that students learn how to speak properly and clearly so they can, well, better present themselves in later life. Slang can still be used when speaking outside classrooms, but sh school should be a formal setting. Using slang too much would mean that students don't develop as, w as wide vocabulary and are misunderstood both in school later and in work. And then three reasons why uh, slang should not be, uh, be banned. Slang is an important part of the English language and is often used in everyday life. Well, that is true because you can you can hear everybody using it in everyday life. Um, uh, yeah, uh, language is constantly evolving. Slang is a part of evolving, evolving, and slang is a part of that. Schools should be teaching students about the differences rather than banning them. Uh, so there you go, and we did have a vote, and fifty six. Uh, 56% said yes, uh, slang should be banned in schools and 44% said no, slang does belong in schools so it should stay in schools. Uh, so unfortunately, slang, on that one, slang doesn't belong in schools uh, on our vote. I love was shaking a bit. Might just be me. Um, Uh, oh, we actually have. I think most of our reports are from the week junior today. Yeah. Next, we discuss Michael Rosen's poetry prize. Um, so many of you might know who Michael Rosen is. Uh, Michael Rosen uh, is a well, he's a poet. Uh, he writes books. He writes poetry. You might have seen his videos on YouTube as well. Um, so we're going to tell you about his. Uh, award that he's won. So, Michael Rosen has won the Centre for Literacy in Primary Education Poetry Award, C-L-I-P-P-A, which is an important prize given for poetry written for on the move <coughs> poems about migration with illustrations by Quentin Blake uh, and the Shell... Shellenham, Shellenham Literacy Festival on the 11th, 11th of October. Inspired by stories about his own family. These poems are about migration as well, uh, which is when people leave their homes and search for a better life. Uh, Michael's family were Polish Jews, some of whom went missing after the Second World War in 1939 to 1945. Julie Blake, one of the uh, C R 
L-I-P-P-A, I have to read that out again, judges said, this book to bring adults and children to ask, what's my history? Where have I come from? So, that is Michael's, uh, Michael Rosen's Poetry Prize. I also have something to show you. The week's silliest headline. So, the week's silliest headline is Andy Murray, British tennis star, reunited with missing wedding ring and smelly trainers. On the BBC. Uh, if you want to find out more about that, you can go to bbc.co.uk forward slash Andy Murray. No, forward slash silliest headline of the week. Um, so moving on. Let's start, let's make a paper aeroplane. Um, and to do that, you'll actually need a piece of paper. It's scribbled on though. Anyway, this is just to show you that you can use scrap paper or normal paper. So then, now let's show you how to make a paper aeroplane. So, oh, right, fold your piece of paper in half. really slowly because it needs to be equal. Unfold the paper, uh, so fold the paper in half vertically, unfold the paper and fold each of the top corners. Oh you have to do it, sorry I'm thinking of a paper hat. So fold it like that and then make like a rocket type. Fold each of the co top corners into the centre line which you have made from folding it. I don't like this really. So then, fold the top edges into the centre line. So then, uh, do the same, but with the other edges, like this. Don't do it until I show you, because it does get like this. Um, fold the plane in half towards you, like that. Fold the wings down, matching the top edges up with the bottom edge of the body and then you can also do two bits like this which I have done uh, to make it just look even fancier like this then you need to check whether it works looks like it works so um now we're going to discuss do drone displays replace fireworks? Fireworks have become a regular feature of all sorts of celebrations, including Bonfire Night, New Year's Eve and Diwali. To some, they are a vital part of, of the festivities and some to look forward every year. However, for others, they can be very distressing on New Year's Eve and uh, on New Year's Eve. In 2020, London introduced a drone display as a part of its fireworks to show for the first time altogether drone displays starting to replace fireworks at major celebrations and events around the world, including this year's Tokyo Olympics. Since the future, as drones are quieter cleaner than, and cleaner than fireworks, however, others don't think it's the same. So what do you think? Again, you can email me at rootku at yahoo.com. Um, um, can I just ask my studio producer, how long have we been? 15 and 10 seconds. 15 and 10 seconds. Not for long. We've got the weather now. So, now it is time for the weather. Uh, can we have my weather control, please? This is the Rupert Cooper Show weather with me, Rupert Cooper. So, oh, I don't think you can see me there. Um, let's take a look closer around the earth over there. It is a bit, uh, it's a bit 
bigger than last time. So in Edinburgh we have 12 degrees, Belfast 11, going into Manchester as well with 12. Then London does have the same as Brussels, going up to Paris, I don't know why we have Paris on there today, but going into Paris, we actually have four. So if you are off on holiday to Paris, make sure you pack your sun cream, because it says on my next slide that it's going to be sunny there. Berlin 10, then Prague 8, and Vienna 9 degrees. Well, and then let's have a look at our seven day uh, weather forecast and then we'll show it up on a bar chart. If you don't, if you can't see this, Saturday 13 degrees, Sunday 9 degrees, Monday 12 degrees. In fact, no, sorry, Saturday and some Saturday, which is to yesterday i don't know why i put it on my slide um so saturday is well was a sunny day with part part clouds really and then it's the same today going into monday it's the same as well tops of nine degrees for sunday and 12 degrees for monday then cloudy on tuesday with tops of 16 degrees then going into wednesday sunny again and i think this is our most ever uh, Top of 16 degrees. Then going into Thursday, clouds with some sunny spells. The same with Friday. Tops of 14 to uh, 13 to 14 degrees. And if you have a look at this bar chart of our seven-day outlook, um, there won't be any. There won't be much rain this week. Uh, we will make uh, the yellows is sun. Um, and this one here is maybe some rain, uh, maybe some rain and clouds, but sunny. Um, so then our outlook for Sunday, t for today to Tuesday. Sunday will continue largely dry and fine with plenty of sunshine. Cloud and a few showers will likely move into eastern areas throughout the afternoon. Monday may see, Monday may see clouds lingering in places with a few spells of rain but it will turn drier and brighter in the afternoon for many with sunny spells tuesday it will be warm with spells of sunshine and just a few patches of cloud so then moving in on to wednesday will be just about the same now thank you for watching the rupert cooper show today from us all here at the rupert cooper show have a lovely day today and enjoy that sun whilst it lasts. Bye-bye. <laughs>